Hello, my name is Mark Mills. I'm an artist from Calgary. Thanks for taking part in Music Calgary Sound Off Summit Digital Strategies, taking place online from Mokinstis in the Tree 7 region of Southern Alberta. Before we begin, it's important to acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Gaina, the Gunny, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region. For future events, make sure to follow Music Calgary on socials and sign up as a member on the website for more programming updates. Now the moment you've been waiting for, please enjoy 14 Ways to Make Money with Your Music Online, presented by Banzoodle. Hello, friends of Music Calgary. Um, greetings from Montreal. Uh, my name is Dave Cool. That is actually my real name. I am the Vice President of Business Development at Banzoogle. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about Banzoogle in a second, but today we're going to talk about uh, ways you can make money with your music uh, online, which has uh, become even more important, obviously, over the last uh, last year, given uh, the circumstances around the pandemic and the loss of uh, live show revenue. Um, so very quickly, Banzoogle is a website platform uh, for musicians. Um, all in one platform, you can easily build your website in EPK. Uh, you don't need to know any coding. You can sell your music, merch, tickets, live stream tickets, take donations, uh, all commission free through the platform. It even has built-in crowdfunding features and fans fan subscriptions, which we'll talk about, and a built-in mailing list so you can uh, collect emails and send professional newsletters. Our support team is online seven days a week. Uh, we're mostly musicians at the company. We're officially based in Ottawa, actually. Not a lot of people know that we're a Canadian company, but we're proudly a Canadian company. I've uh, been around for 17 years, and we power over 55,000 websites for artists around the world. And we recently crossed, our members recently crossed an incredible milestone where they have now sold over $75 million worth of music, merch, tickets, donations, um, uh, subscriptions, uh, digital files, um, digital merch, all that fun stuff. So incredible milestone for our members. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, all these different revenue streams um, and how you can do those through your website. Some aren't, but a lot of them you can do directly uh, to fans through your own website. If you don't have a website yet or uh, are thinking of building a new one, uh, we have a, a member benefit for Music Calgary members and friends. Uh, the promo code is Music Calgary 15 and you get an extended free trial. So instead of 30 days, you get three months and you get 15% off your first year of any subscription, whether it's monthly or annual and one of our three plans on any of those. Okay, so to the topic at hand, uh, 14 ways to make money with music online. You know, it unfortunately is still going to be a little while before, you know, live shows and touring and, and festivals are, are back in full swing. Hopefully, hopefully later this summer, maybe the fall. Um, but while musicians have had time in the last year, we've seen a lot of our members do this uh, where they're laying the groundwork to um, generate more money, more revenues online directly through the websites. Because all that effort, all that time and, and work that you put in now uh, is going to pay off and continue to pay off once live shows are back. So you'll have these new revenue streams, hopefully, and then you add back in live show revenue and then you know, you're know you in a better place than you were, hopefully, uh, pre-pandemic. So number one, you know, selling music through your website. Um, I'll, I'll get into some data at the end of this workshop. Uh, we took a look at all the data from 2020 with our members, and it's really incredible to see um, how it goes against, if you do nothing but read like, you know, articles online about it's all about streaming, it's all about streaming. It is a lot about streaming, uh, but fans still do buy downloads. If you look at Banzoogle's data, and if you look at data from um, platforms like Bandcamp, Clearly, music fans are still buying downloads. So selling music through your website, you own that experience. So you own that little slice of the internet. Uh, by selling directly to your fans, you keep more of the money. With Bands Equals Commission Free, I believe Mancamp takes 10 or 15% of sales. Um, you can let fans pay what they want, pay what they can. Um, and in a lot of cases, they'll give you more than what you know the price would have been. And you collect that valuable data, that those email addresses, 
which is essential for long-term success because you can use those emails to let fans know about your and next new album, new single, upcoming shows, once we get back to live shows or your upcoming live stream shows, crowdfunding campaigns, all that stuff. So if you don't have a website, and we get this question a lot, and you know we've been around for 17 years, so we've, a lot has changed online in 17 years. However, websites and email have remained um, not only relevant, but more important than ever, because you do own that real estate online, you do own that little slice of the internet. So your fans and the industry will always be able to find you there. Uh, you own the experience, so there's hopefully not a lot of distractions, ads, there's no design limits, you can brand it exactly how you want. And most importantly, I would argue is that you own the data. So all, all the data, emails you're collecting, the customer information, fan information, you own that and then you can use that um, to build future campaigns, uh, whether it's marketing or sales. Um, and again, you earn more money by selling direct to your fans. Uh, when you know someone buys music from iTunes or Amazon, uh, there are customers of iTunes or Amazon and you don't have their data, you make a lot less money. Um, so it's important to have that presence that you own uh, online. We have an incredible guide written by our communications manager, Melanie Keeley, called How to Make a Website for Your Music. It's not specific to Banzoogle, um, but if you're just looking to redesign a site or make a website for the first time, it's an incredible resource for artists to check out. It's on our blog. Um, there's a lot of resources in this uh, workshop. I should mention that um, I'm going to be sure to make this uh, uh, presentation available to Music Calgary so that uh, you can get in touch with them and then they can send you a copy of the slides because there's a lot of extra resources and, and guides and blog posts that you can read up on all of these revenue streams uh, that we're gonna talk about. Okay, so making, like I just mentioned, making your music available through other online music retailers. So some fans will only wanna buy from places that they know and trust and already have their credit card on file kind of thing. So, you know, you should still make your music available on the iTunes and Amazons of the world. Um, just be sure that you're promoting the direct to fan, you know, through your own website first and then capturing those fans. And then there'll be some fans who will just go find it on these other platforms, which is fine. But, um, and it's an, still an important thing to do to make sure that you're present. Um, on those platforms. Another guide um, that's free on our blog is the complete guide to selling your music online. And it really goes in depth on not only how to sell your music online, but when and which platforms to use during the, you know, the life cycle of, of an album or EP. Um, so you can check that out on our blog as well. Uh, streaming. So I'm not going to get into the, the debate over streaming revenues and um, how much that, how much the payouts are per stream and all that. It's, it's, a uh, obviously a contentious topic and it's, it's a complex, um, topic as well, but yes, the vast majority of listening is happening on streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, uh, Amazon music. Um, and obviously there's still a long way to go with streaming revenue, but you know, it's still an important, um, aspect of, of your overall marketing mix and sales mix. So being present on those platforms, because again, some fans will only want to stream through Spotify or they have a smart speaker like Alexa speaker, and they are only going to stream music through Amazon music. So you got to make sure that your music's on there and available. There'll be some revenue from it. And if you get picked up on some certain popular playlists, obviously that revenue can become increasingly more um, important. Um, but it's also, there's a whole fan discovery a music discovery aspect of streaming platforms, which is really cool as well. But it's important to have your music available there for your fans that that's their way of consuming music. And we have a, a blog post on getting your music featured on Spotify playlists. It's something um, you know that we've seen with some of our members. It can, it can be career changing to be added to some of these um, top playlists on, on Spotify. Uh, monetizing your YouTube channel. So you can set up monetization on your account. Uh, so, and also whenever your music is used, whether it's in a video on your channel or someone else's, you're actually entitled to collect the percentage of the ad revenue that's being uh, made through those videos. And so you can go to your distribution, your digital distribution company. Um, they pretty much all do this. So just to make sure that uh, they are collecting that revenue on your behalf. 
Um, here's a resource um, through our friends over at CD Baby called YouTube for Musicians, How Is All the Money Made, which goes into a lot more depth on uh, the different uh, revenue streams uh, available to musicians uh, through YouTube. Crowdfunding. So crowdfunding is still a great way to engage with your fans um, primarily and also to raise money for your next project. Obviously, we're talking about revenue streams and crowdfunding is a way to, to make money. Um, it takes a little, lot more planning and, and budgeting um, to pull off a successful crowdfunding campaign. So it's not it's not a quick fix for like immediate cash flow and, and it should never be seen as something that's purely a to make money. Um, it's really bringing your fans on the creative journey with you uh, in the making of your new album or EP. So um, you can do crowdfunding directly through Bandzoogle. Um, if you're a Bandzoogle member watching this, um, or if you're considering using Bandzoogle, you can actually use it for a crowdfunding campaign. Unlike other platforms, of course, we don't take a percentage of any of the the pledges that come in um, and there's no hold on the money. So all it's, it's basically like a, a pre-sale. And so the money goes straight from your fans directly into your account. We don't touch that. Um, and so you get access to those funds uh, immediately. We have a couple of resources here on crowdfunding. So some, some do's and don'ts. Uh, there's a lot of pitfalls uh, and common mistakes when, uh, when artists are, are embarking on crowdfunding. So that's a great post to check out. And then another resource on how to engage your community, your fan base around your crowdfunding campaign. Fan subscriptions. So this is, you know, this this revenue model has been around for 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 a while. Um, you know, it's it's not for everyone. It's not for all musicians. However, it can be incredibly rewarding um, if you put the time in and if it's something that interests you. Uh, it's it's where fans pay a recurring monthly fee in exchange for rewards and access to your music or other exclusive content. Um, that recurring revenue obviously helps you build a more predictable uh, income stream, which is nice. And it allows you to engage with and reward some of your, your biggest super fans. It is um, another, another revenue stream that takes a lot of planning, um, a lot of effort. Uh, if you're not an artist who is prolific with creating content or doesn't particularly enjoy engaging online all that much, it's probably not the right model for you, which is fine. But if you are, if you do like creating content, and engaging with your fans on a regular basis, it can be a very rewarding um, revenue stream for uh, for musicians. So um, Benzigal has this built in. It's actually a whole different section in our control panel where you set up a fan subscriptions where you can set up different tiers and different reward uh, levels uh, for your fans. We have a bunch of resources on this through our website. Again, they're all linked to on these slides. Uh, so starting off with how to sell fan subscriptions through your website. Um, you know, we came up with a list of 71 ways to reward your music fan subscribers. So all the different rewards you can offer to your fans at different levels or tiers. Um, and we've still seen tons of other unique ideas that we didn't even think of in this brainstorm. So it really depends on you, depends on the artist and the create your create your own creativity, your brand, uh, your fan base. Uh, there's lots of fun ways to, uh, to engage with and reward your fans with this kind of revenue model. And then we have a, another resource on promoting subscriptions to your fans because it is a bit of a different ask. It's not like, hey, stream my music or watch my new video or contribute to my crowdfunding campaign with a one-time payment. It's, hey, pay me money every month. And here's why, you know, here's why you should. And here's all the different rewards and perks and exclusive access that you're going to get. So it's a little bit of a different way to uh, position that uh, with your fans. So obviously live stream shows in the last year have become um, much more important um, than ever before. And especially early days, you know, last thinking back about a year ago, um, you know, couldn't log into Facebook or Instagram without seeing a bunch of musicians going live. And it was great. Um, and that was, that still remains a, a fairly common approach. And so you can do those types of live streams through, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, and generate some revenue through a tip jar or your paypal.me link. Um, you know, Banzoogle members, we launched a, a shortly after the pandemic shut everything down. Um, we launched a built in uh, tip jar feature, just a commission free tip jar where fans could um, donate money to their favorite artists. And so, uh, Banzoogle members, when they would go live on Facebook or Instagram, 
or even YouTube, uh, they would put, just put a link to their website and um, put with that with a, a link to that uh, tip jar. And they collected over 8,000 tips, uh, making over $270,000 commission free. The average tip, I believe, was about $32. And we saw tips of, you know, hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars even um, throughout the years. It was, it was pretty incredible. And we had one um, member enter the Haggis who did these incredible um, bi-weekly, like every couple of weeks, they would do a throwback Thursday live stream on Facebook. And the concept was they were one of these bands, and I'm sure there's some of you watching this who are in the same boat, where right when the things got shut down in March 2020, they were just about to launch a new album. And they've been around for a long time, so they have an extensive discography, and this was their, their latest new album. They had a whole tour book with festival dates, the whole thing. Everything got shut down. So they, um, they're, they've always been really creative with direct-to-fan things. They've done some amazing things through their website and generated um, you know, a lot of revenue through crowdfunding and things like that. So what they did was to promote the new album and instead of going on tour because they couldn't um every two weeks on facebook they do a throwback thursday and do like a listening party going th through their entire discography from their first record through leading up to a, a listening party of their new album but it wasn't just them going live and pressing play they pre-recorded interviews with the band members talking about the creative process behind the songs on each album it was a really really nicely produced event every couple of weeks and they generated over fifteen thousand dollars in donations and sales because they would link to their website uh which had the donation button the tip jar and merch and the album that they were talking about that week and merch related to it so they would sell music and merch and take donations every couple of weeks and it was incredibly successful it didn't make up for you know a lost tour and festival dates but um they did really well with that and it was really inspiring to see and you could also try there's obviously tons of different streaming platforms you know you can try platforms like stage it or twitch or sessions which have uh their own you know built-in monetization features and what some artists have been doing successfully is selling tickets to live streams. Um, you know, so rather than streaming for free on Facebook or Instagram, you can uh, sell tickets for exclusive live stream shows. Uh, member Benzigal members sold over twenty six thousand tickets for live streams in, in twenty twenty. So obviously, fans are willing to pay um, for live stream events. And we saw musicians doing uh, live streams that were, you know, where they would play new material they're working on and that was the only place you could hear it or see it um or they would pick an album that their fans knew and would play through the entire thing they would do an all request live stream there's a bunch of different ways you could do it but it is something you can try if you've got a fan base who are who have had been used to paying to see you live uh when you came through their their town then doing ticketed live streams is something that you should definitely uh, consider if you haven't already um there are a lot of you know resources out there for live streams. We have our own guide to live streaming, which breaks down all the different platforms from free through paid, the different monetization options on each. So you can check that out on the Banzoogle blog as well. Uh, monetizing your Facebook and Instagram videos. So this is relatively new. Um, you know, you can actually earn, similar to YouTube, you can actually earn money when your music is used in videos on Facebook and Instagram. And so it's another thing to check with your digital distributor to make sure that they offer this type of social video monetization. And if they do, make sure that you're signed up for it and, and understand how that all that all works. There might be money uh, waiting for you there. Um, selling merch. So, and I'll get to this um, in a little bit. It's amazing to see how much physical merch um, our members sold in the last year. It is by far, by far the biggest revenue generator for Benzigal members through their websites. So CDs, vinyl, shirts, hats, stickers, all that fun stuff. You know, you can ask your fans what type of merch they would want. Uh, see what other artists in your scene or genre are selling. Ask them what, you know, what sells best for them. You can start with some low cost options um, and kind of build up from there. Anything that you, any kind of personalization that you can add to it um, can help make, help drive even more revenue. We had, I can't see the band, but we had um, I, a band on, use Bandzoogle for a pre order. They're pretty much YouTube stars. They have over a million uh, subscribers on YouTube. And they did a pre sale of a CD 
uh, that they signed. So it, was per it wasn't personalized to each fan. They couldn't do it on this volume, but the CDs were signed by the band members. And they did a pre-sale of 10,000 CDs, which sold out in less than 24 hours at 50. I should have mentioned this off the top at $50 per CD. So they charged a premium CDs cost what a couple bucks. And they took the time to sign 10,000 CDs, which is a lot of time, but, um, they sold them. They sold out of, of 10,000 CDs at 50 bucks a piece in less than 24 hours. And then they put the CD for sale unsigned, just the regular CD, I think for 10 bucks, something like that. You know, they sold a few hundred of those, but the fans really, their fans really wanted that signed, um, version. So I'm sure not everyone watching this has 1 million YouTube subscribers, of course, but concept remains the same. Anything personalized that you can do, um, adding personal notes, offering to add personal notes um, to CDs or, or vinyl or posters or, or what have you. Um, you can ask for a few extra dollars for that uh, and it's personalized for the fan and they're probably gonna really enjoy it. Um, print on demand merch. So this is a, a nice, relatively risk-free way of selling merch. Uh, Benzoo integrated with a Printful, which is a print on demand drop shipping service um, earlier, uh, to start the year and you can, there's no upfront costs. So, and, and there's also no inventory. You don't have to buy, um, you know, a hundred t-shirts and store them in your closet or garage, which, you know, I'm sure many of us have done. Um, you can put up, you can design merch with your logo, your, your artist name, or, you know, some kind of special design and put it on a bunch of different items from t-shirts to mugs, to stickers, to hoodies, uh, to leggings, um, phone cases, all that fun stuff and put it up in your store. And, and then you only pay for what sells. So if a fan buys a t-shirt and a hat, um, they pay for it, Printful gets the order, they print it, um, and then they, sh they ship it directly to the fan. And that's, you know, and you pay Printful. Uh, the cost of, of doing that. So it's a really nice way to experiment with selling merch and seeing what types of merch um, your fans enjoy and what they like, like to buy. You know, when we were setting this all up um, at Banzoogle in talking to Printful, they work with a lot of uh, music companies and uh, we were curious what some of the best sellers are just so we can advise, you know, our, our members. And, it's no surprise. I mean, people love t-shirts. Like it's really mostly about t-shirts. There's a lot of other interesting things. And around the holidays, apparently like socks and mugs are really popular, but f you know, if you're just getting started, put some t-shirt options, hoodies, that kind of thing. And you know, it's a good place to start. I'm um, selling digital merch. This is something I don't think enough musicians do, to be honest. It's, you know, there's low cost of production. It's going to take some time probably to put these types of items together, but there's no inventory and they can make really great items for your super fans. So um, you can sell, you know, through the Benzigal store feature, you can sell any kind of digital files. So it could be a PDF, a video, and some files with a bunch of different files on it. So you can sell sheet music, uh, guitar tabs, lyric books, poetry books. Um, you know, if you teach an instrument or teach um, voice lessons. You can sell lessons um, in video form. You can sell unreleased live shows, that kind of thing, any type of video. That band in for the Haggis that I mentioned that we're doing those throwback Thursday Facebook lives. Um, they once made a documentary of the making of one of their albums years ago. Um, and they, they sold them for like 10 bucks. It was a digital, you know, 45 minute documentary feature on, on the making of their album. And they sold thousands of copies of this, of this, um, digital film that they, uh, that they put together. So you can get really creative and it can probably be a little bit more time consuming, but again, you're not storing any inventory. Um, you know, sheet music, um, Sarah Sleen, who some of you may know, a Canadian singer songwriter, um, she uses Van Zugel and she sells sheet music of her music through her website and does it very, very successfully. So it's something that um, is worth exploring for sure. Um, licensing your music. This is a big topic and it always has been, but especially during the pandemic. And, you know, in speaking to some of the companies that work in this space over the last year, there is an expectation that once things really start to open up, there's going to be a huge need for music because film, television, 
advertising production is going to ramp way back up and there's going to be a need for music. So obviously licensing your music is a lot easier said than done. I don't want to sit here and be like, just go license your music. It's easy. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Um, you know, but it's one of those things where even one placement could be a game changer for your career. And we've seen that, you know, if, uh, with some of our own members who get, you know, the theme song to, you know, popular Netflix shows and they're, you know, relative unknown artists, but they, um, either have relationships or they use various services to get their music in front of, uh, music supervisors. So, um, it, it can be an incredible income generator, but not only that, it can really help bring a lot of exposure to your, your career. Um, another resource from our friends over at CD Baby. Uh, this is an incredible guide. Please check it out. It's called Sync Licensing, A Musician's Guide, and it really goes in depth on this topic and, and how to approach it as a, as a musician. And we have a, a blog post uh, on the Manzoogle blog, just the different ways to license your music. There's a lot of different um, avenues to, uh, to approach this, um, this particular revenue stream. Sponsorships, so we're almost there at 13. So sponsorships, if you've built up a fan base, um, you know, music companies and maybe even major brands might be willing to sponsor you. You know, even during the pandemic, I mean, you can offer visibility through your social channels, uh, your email list, your website. You know, we've all seen, you know, paid Instagram posts and sponsored YouTube videos. Um, so if you if you have a bit of a fan base, um, the more you know about your fan base, the better, because let's say a lot of your fans are concentrated in Calgary. You can even approach local businesses for small partnerships um, and sponsorships, just saying like, hey, here's the data. I have X many fans in this um, demographic that live in this city. Um, you know, would you be the one to sponsor an Instagram post or a YouTube video? Again, this is not for everyone, for sure. Not all artists are comfortable with that type of brand partnership, but it is something that you can explore, especially when you've built up a little bit of a fan base. Um, this resource from our friends over at Soundfly, it's a great educational resource for musicians. Their flypaper blog is amazing. Uh, and they have this post called Four Steps to Attracting or Asking for Sponsorship as an Artist, which sort of goes through how you would approach um, a company about uh, sponsorship. And last but not least, uh, teaching music online. So we saw a lot of musicians do this over the past year um, out of necessity, and they'll probably keep doing it, you know, post pandemic. But offering lessons can be kind of a fun and unique way for your fans to support you if they want to learn guitar and you play guitar, <laughs> you know, why not learn from their favorite, you know, musicians? So it can really help. Um, it gives you another income stream and it also helps you hone your craft at the same time. It's a great way to also practice yourself and, and in teaching, it makes you think about things a little bit in, from a different perspective and you can teach, I mean, there's a million different ways to approach it, but you know, obviously zoom and Skype and Google hangouts and, and all that, um, you can offer, you know, personal lessons. It's something that we see going back to fan subscriptions. We see music teachers using that subscription model so that, uh, you know, you pay five bucks a month and you get, you know, uh, weekly lessons. If you pay 10 bucks a month, you get a one-on-one -on -one lesson once a month kind of thing. So you can play around with that if you're really serious about uh, teaching music. And uh, we have a, a post on our blog called How to Get Started Teaching Online uh, by creating a, a, a mini course written by Brie Noble, who's an incredible uh, musician and, and music consultant uh, and music teacher herself. So that's up on our blog as well, if that's a, if that's a revenue stream that you're thinking of um, exploring. So I just before, um, before we go, I just want to, I alluded to this at the beginning, just, um, just to talk a little bit about the data uh, that we saw just from Bands Eagle members. So we power over 55,000 websites for musicians around the world. And we wanted to see in 2020 what, what that looked like. Um, and so some of this data might surprise you. Um, so I, I just wanted to share it and it just shows the power of owning that you know, a little slice of the internet yourself, only in that direct to fan relationship and what that can mean, uh, whether you use Banzoogle or not, but just having that website is so important and having that, that means to sell directly to your fans. Um, you know, over 48 million visitors to Banzoogle websites in 2020 from over 200 different countries and territories around the world. Um, 
it's incredible. Like websites, I think we said it's an email capturing gold mine. Um, you know, over 2.3 million fan emails were collected through um, our member sites in 2020. So that's an incredibly valuable data um, to use to then promote new music, live streams, you know, live shows when they come back, crowdfunding campaigns, that kind of thing. Um, fans still download music. So just under 900,000 um, uh, music downloads were downloaded through our uh, our member websites in 2020. Um, so I'm going to skip down to the, on the bottom right, there's the total revenue generated in 2020 through um, through our member websites, which is $12.7 million, um, all commission free. But going back to, you know, your online merch table up here, $9.4 million is uh, just merch, physical and some digital merch as well. But it just goes to show like, like what proportion like merch sales take up uh, for direct to fan sales through, through your website. Um, you know, talked about this before, but you can charge for live stream shows, you know, 26,000 tickets were sold for live streams. Um, over $300,000 was generated through those fan subscriptions, those monthly recurring payments. Um, and again, the tip, um, that tip jar generated over $270,000 for uh, band sequel members in, in 2020. So just, you know, a little snapshot of just through your website, uh, the types of revenue streams and the types of revenue that you can generate and, and data that you can collect, um, through your website. So if you don't have a website uh, or if you have one and you're thinking about redesigning it, um, again, we have a, a member benefit for, for Music Calgary members and friends. It's the promo code is Music Calgary 15 and you get um, three months free to try Bandzoogle instead of 30 days and then you get 15% off of um, any of the uh, subscription plans. So thanks everyone. I hope uh, this was helpful. Thanks to Music Calgary for having me, and uh, I'm you know I'll make sure that you guys can all get a copy of the slides uh, of this if you're interested. Stay safe. Take care.